This video is going to cover the unit test number two, which I gave my class, which covers all the three dimensional uh, vectors and their different properties from chapters, some from chapter six and some from chapter seven. So if you, um, if your teacher has broken it into two parts and we'll be on the same page, if not, there will be some things from the first unit test that I did for vectors with this one. So you might want to check both if um, your teacher did it primarily by chapter and not by type of vector. Okay, so the first question here says locate the points on the x, y, and z axes below. So we're going to find 3, minus 1, and 2. So remember that the solid lines here, well actually I didn't do them all in dotted, but this is the negative z axis and this is the negative y axis and this is the negative x axis right so if i want to find three minus one and two i would go one two three minus one and then up to boom boom so right here this would be point a point b minus two so i'm going to go this way so that's minus one minus two and then i'm going to go left one so I can't see my dots here very well. So 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, left 1, minus 1, and then up 3. 1, 2, 3. And that would give me... These, is, these are really bad dots. I'm off a little bit because that should have been... It's because I put this dotted line over top of the dots. Let's try that again. Minus 2, minus 1, and 3. That's going to take me right here. And see, x is 0, y is minus 1, so I go left 1, and then I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, and this would be C. Okay, so there's my three points. It says, what is the equation of the plane containing the points A, B, and C? So if you look at the points here, they all have y equals negative 1, and that's the hint that the plane is actually y equals minus 1. Given the points minus 2, 3, minus 7, and B, 4, 8, minus 5, determine vector A, B, and its magnitude. Okay, so vector A, B, this is very easy, right? That's B minus A. So I'm going to do 4 minus minus 2. That's my x coordinate, 8 minus 3 for my y coordinate, and minus 5 minus minus 7. Please be careful with those minuses. And that's going to give me. This is 6 and 5 and 2. And what is the magnitude of AB? Then you use your absolute value signs. It's going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of each of these. Like that. <clears throat> so that's 36 and 25. And 4 is going to be 65. So the square root of 65. Good easy start to the test. Determine the value of a and b such the vector that the vector pair are collinear. So remember, if they're collinear, then they have to have the same ratios. So if I do minus 9 over b, minus 9 over b has to be equal to a over 2, has to be equal to 15 over minus 5. 5, not 3, minus 5. I'm dividing in my head already. Okay, so if I want to solve for b here, I would have like minus 9 over b has to be equal to 15 over minus 3. So b is minus 9 times minus 9 times minus, I keep writing 3 here, times minus 5 divided by 15. And that would be equal to 3. And a is going to be equal to 2 times 15 divided by minus 5. And that, of course, is going to give you 6. Good start to your first test, right? Everybody's happy. Okay, question 4. Determine the value of k so that u, vector u, minus 5k3, and vector v, 1, 2, minus 7, are orth orthogonal. Orthogonal means they're going to be perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, then you know that 
the are we on the page? We know that the dot product has to be equal to zero. So u dot v is equal to zero. So I'm going to do minus five k three dotted with one two minus seven has to be equal to zero. So it gives me minus five plus two k minus 5 plus 2k minus 21 is equal to 0. And minus 5 minus 21 is minus 26. Bring it to the other side. That's plus 26. 2k is equal to 26. So k is equal to 13. And you can go back and try the dot product to make sure that all worked. So I had minus 5 plus 2k minus 21 minus 21, 26. I always check my work, especially when I'm doing them for you in the end. Okay, so next question. It says, use the cross product to determine the angle, the angle between 5 minus 4, 1, and minus 3, 2, and 7. Okay, so we know, maybe your teacher is nice and gives you the formula. We know that the magnitude of the cross product has to be equal to u v sine theta. Okay, so the first thing I might like to do here is do the cross product, find the magnitude of the cross product and the magnitude of u and v. So let's do the magnitude of u first. That's going to be the square root of 25 plus 16 plus 1. That's the square root of 42. And the magnitude of vector v is going to be the square root of uh, 9 plus 4 plus 49. That's 53 and 9 is the square root of 62. Okay, so I have those two. And that's going to be able to give me sine theta very nicely here if I can find the, cross, the magnitude of the cross product. So remember when you're doing the cross product, write it out twice. 5 minus 4, 1. 5 minus 4, 1. And the other one right underneath it. Minus 3, 2, 7. Minus 3, 2, 7. Get rid of the outsides and make your little crosses here. So u cross v is going to be equal to, so I have minus 4 times minus 7, that's 28, minus 2 is 26, let's see, make sure I got this right, minus 4, 1, 5, 4, 5 minus 4, 2, 3, 2, oh, I thought that was a minus 7, minus 3, 2, 7, minus 3, so this is minus 28, minus 2 more is minus 30. And my second one here is going to be minus 3, minus 35. That's minus 38. And the last one is going to be 10, minus 12 is going to be minus 2. Okay, so the magnitude of u cross v is going to be the square root of 30 squared plus minus 38 squared plus minus 2 squared. And that looks like it's going to be a big messy number and I'm going to tell you what it is because I don't want to waste all of your time. So I get the square root of 2348. So now I can plug all that into this formula here. So the square root of 2348 is equal to the square root of 42 times the square root of 62 times the sine of theta. And of course that means sine theta is going to be 2348 divided by 42, 62, and theta. Of course you're going to take um, sine negative 1 of whatever this is and it comes out to about 71. 
0.7 degrees. Okay, so it says, part B, it says use the dot product to verify your answer in part A. So the dot product is going to be this times one of these ones. So if I did 5 minus 4 and 1 and dotted it with this vector here, so I want minus 30, minus 38, minus 2, dot with 5 minus 4, 1. And I'm going to let you do all that because it's going to take too long. Unless I get out my calculator. So it's going to give you 0, right? If the dot product is 0, then you found the the orthogonal vector. Okay, do you want me to do it? Not really, right? Well, we could probably do it in our heads. Minus 150. And what's minus 38? Uh, it's 32 carries 3, 12, 15. And 2. There we go. Equals 0. Yay! I thought it was going to be harder, harder math to do in my head. Okay, number six. A force of 75 newtons is applied to a wrench in a counterclockwise um, direction at 60 to the hanger. 60 to the hanger. 60 to the handle. This should be 60 degrees to the handle. 12 centimeters from the center of the bolt. Calculate the magnitude of the torque. Okay, so we have a bolt, something like this, right here. We have a wrench coming across like this, we'll give it some more dimension. And we have an angle of 60 degrees and we have 75 Newtons of force and it is 12 centimeters or 0 0.12 meters away. Make sure you change it to meters. So tau here, magnitude of tau is going to be 0 0.12 times 75 times the sine of 60 degrees, and that comes out to about 7.79 Newton meters. In what direction does the bolt move? So here you want to talk about whether or not you're going, you're pushing down, so that's counterclockwise, so that's left, so we're loosening the bolt, right? If we're moving this way, we're loosening the bolt and it's going to move outwards. So the direction, sometimes you say up out of the page. Okay, so this way, going this way is counterclockwise. So you're turning left. This would be right, lefty Lucy. Lucy brings it up. Okay, given vector u is this, v and w, evaluate u dot v cross w plus <coughs> vector v. Oh my goodness. <coughs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is the v cross w. So v cross w minus 5, 2, minus 1, minus 5, 2, minus 1. And W, 8, 1, minus 2. 8, 1, minus 2. Get rid of the last ones and do your cross product. So V cross W. Remember, we're going to get a vector. So I have minus 4, minus, minus 1. Minus 4, minus, minus 1 is minus 3. And then I have negative 8, minus 10. That's negative 18, and I have minus 5, minus 16 is minus 21. <clears throat> so that's my V crossed with W. Now if I dot that with U, so U was um, 3, minus 1, 4, and I'm dotting that with minus 3, minus 18, and minus 21, 
and remember that this is um, a dot product so I multiply them and I add right so minus 9 plus 18 minus 84 so that's minus 93 plus 18 that's negative 75 and the absolute value of that would be 75 of course but it didn't ask for the absolute value so we'll just leave that this is the dot product so now the last part I want to add the magnitude of V so the magnitude of V is equal to square each and add them so I have 25 plus 4 plus 1 that's the square root of 30 and finally evaluating all this so I'd say u dotted with v cross w plus the magnitude of v is equal to um, this part here we've already done. So we've got minus 75 plus the square root of 30. And that's going to be about minus 69.52. Okay, so we've... We're just adding the magnitude. This is just a calculation that was asked for, so it's not um, it's not really all that difficult, but it looks kind of scary when you first see it. So do it in parts. Do the cross product, then do the dot product, and then add the magnitude of vector v, and there's your four marks. Okay, if p equals 1, 2, minus 3, and q equals 2, minus 1, 4, find a unit vector perpendicular to both P and Q. So you know that a, um, a vector perpendicular to P and Q, all I have to do is take the cross product. So here we go again. 1, 2, minus 3. 1, 2, minus 3. 2, minus 1, 4. 2, minus 1, 4. Get rid of the outside ones. And I think it's helpful to draw in these arrows so you can see where you're going. I should space them out a little better. Okay, so if I do um, P cross Q, I'm going to get a vector. Remember, so I have 8 minus 3. That's going to be 5. The next one is minus 6 minus 4. That's minus 10. And the last one is going to be minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5. And the magnitude of P cross Q is going to be equal to, and why am I doing this? Because I need the unit vector, right? So I need the magnitude of this. It's going to be the square root of 5 squared plus minus 10 squared plus minus 5 squared. That's 25, 50, and 100. It's the square root of 150. And that comes out to, we've got 25 times 6 in here. I'll just write that in brackets here so you remember. That gives me 5 root 6. So if I want the unit vector, I want 1 over 5 root 6 times this. So unit vector is going to be 1 over 5 root 6 times 5 minus 10 minus 5. And these 5s are going to divide, right? I can divide this 5 out. So that's going to give me 1 over root 6. And that's going to give me minus 2 over root 6. And the last one is going to give me minus 1 over root 6. So this is the unit vector right here. Okay, remember the unit vector, all you have to do is magnet multiply by one over the magnitude of the vector to get it as a unit vector. Show that vector a 1, 2, minus 29 can be written as a linear combination of vector b and vector c. Okay, so to do that, again, you write out some scalar multiple of this one and this one. So if I chose A here, so actually not be a good idea to pick A and B. Um, if 
vector b, I'm going to multiply, I'm not going to start with vector b, I'm going to multiply each of the brackets. I guess I can use a and b. So if I did a, some constant, a times 1, 2, minus 3, plus, and again I'm using the square brackets, you forgive me for that, will you? So b times 3, 1, 4 has to be equal to 1, 12, and minus 29. Okay, so all you're doing is writing it out as a scalar multiple. You could put S and T here. That might have even been better. So I make three equations now. So something times 1 plus something times 3 has to be equal to 1. Okay, so hopefully you've understood this. So I have A plus 3B is equal to 1. That's my first equation. My second equation is going to be 2A plus B is equal to 12. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the third equation for now because that's the one that I'm going to use to check to see if, if I have found the right multiples to give me this. Okay, so equation 1, I'm going to multiply times 2. So I have two a's here. So I have 2a and 3 times 2 is 6b and 1 times 2 is 2. Now I'm going to subtract. So 2a minus 2a, no a's. b minus 6b minus 5b. And 12 minus 2 is 10, so b equals negative 2. So when b equals negative 2, a plus 3 times negative 2, I'm just substituting that into this equation to solve for a. So I have minus 6, bring it to the other side, a is equal to 5. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. Add 1 is 7. Good, good math there, Ms. Havrat. Okay, 7. So, therefore, now you would have found that mistake if you went back and plugged it in. So I'm saying that 7 times 1, 2, minus 3, minus 2 times 3, 1, 4, is going to give me 1, 12 minus 29. Oh, I should have checked the third one, right? I didn't write that out here. So let's put equation 3 here, the last one. So we have minus 3a plus 4b has to be equal to minus 29 if this is true. If I put in a here is 7, I would have minus 21. If b is minus 2, minus 8, that gives me minus 29. Now, you could have done that as a left side. I don't know. It depends on your teacher. Right side. So, therefore, A equals 7 and B is equal to minus 2. And again, you could do a quick check. if you got lots of time on your test. So, 7 minus 6 is 1 and 14 minus 2 is 12 and minus 21 minus 8 is minus 29. It all works. The last question says... What does it mean if you can write two vectors as a linear combination of another? Which is what we did here. What have we shown? What does this mean? So what it means is that it means that the vectors, fill in the blanks for me here, the vectors lie on the same plane. The rain in Spain is mainly on the plain. Therefore, they are what we call coplanar. Coplanar. Now, the other thing that you could determine, which I did in the last lesson, was that if you did a triple scalar product on these three vectors, you would get zero. You would have no height, and therefore no volume of your parallelopiped. Okay, so that's um, a practice test for you. Hopefully that helps you out and that um, your questions are similar or kind of similar on your own test and that you've got this all figured out by now. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and on to chapter eight next.